Just want to do a quick video on my JNC 4000 12 volt power supply and jump box. This is a terrific box, which I've had since 2015. So we're pushing six years old now and you can keep on repairing and fixing it so that it lasts indefinitely. So one of the things that I did after not too long owning it, when the battery stopped holding as good a charge, it's a lead acid battery. I bought a new battery. This is the one that I replaced it with, um, which I got on Amazon, very fair price and really good ratings. And then I stuck a post-it note on it to show the last time I replaced it. So it's actually the second time I've replaced this battery. So to do that battery replacement, all you have to do is get the right size form factor battery, which is just this one. And then there's just cables that you remove for the negative cable and for the positive cable. And you pop it on and it's as good as new. You start working with it. But the reason that I'm making this video today is because I have a new problem with my jump box. And that's right here. The receptacle cracked. So there's a little piece of plastic right down there at the bottom, which is broken. And then this terminal pushes in, <laughs> just disappears inside of it. And so I thought, oh, this is gonna be a mess. I was gonna open it up and try and see if there's any way I could save it with some Gorilla Glue or something like that. But it turns out that that terminal is really just the other side of a transformer block. Um, this is a regular 12 volt, 500 milliamp transformer that's just wired right into the positive and negative terminals, just like you would plug it into the side of a laptop. The reason I want to keep this box alive is because it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that are found on so many of these other boxes these days when you buy. It seems like there's a competition to put a compressor and uh, all kinds of other accessories on it. And I just want a box that's going to jump my battery and give me a 12 volt receptacle on the other side so I can plug something else into it. And I also don't want an external power transformer, which is what most of them come with these days, where you take this and plug it into the wall. Then you got to keep track of the battery box and that transformer. This thing, as it's set up, just plugs right into any extension cord I can find. So before I get far into this, I'm going to disconnect the negative cable on the battery. And it's going to require me to work with the positive terminal in order to wire the new transformer into place. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the battery altogether so that you don't wind up seeing a video of me shocking myself. If you don't own one of these sweet magnetic part mats, they're like six bucks on Amazon and they're incredible. Those were all of the plastic screws that came out of all these little spots around the perimeter when I took the rear housing off with a simple Phillips screwdriver. The transformers held in with two little screws and this metal bracket. I already popped them out before I decided I could do this. So here's how simple this is. And I don't have any idea why this broke if it fell on its face or what happened to it, but it's missing a chunk of plastic there and this terminal just slides in and out. So obviously it doesn't work very well with the extension cord anymore. It's gotta go. So it just has two wires, one wire right here, which runs along and is tied in with this little piece of shrink tape to the side of the positive terminal. And then there's this wire, which snakes right along here and is tied into this one with another piece of, with a wire crimp. So I'm gonna, splice into that and then replace this terminal block. If you've been watching this video this long, you probably save all of your transformers. If not, you need to go next door to your neighbor and ask him to find his box of transformers because what you need is a 12 volt, 500 milliamp that fits the same form factor as this. I'm about to sort through this bag and find one. After a bunch of testing different adapters to see which ones fit. Some of them were too long to fit in the slot that this one was provided. Some of them had a face that didn't fit through the hole here, including this one, which I like just fine, but the square was not the right size as that, and I didn't want to mess with the front face of this. So what I'm gonna do is go with this one. This is, so let's back up to the first one. The original power supply is a 12 volt, 500 milliamp 
power supply. The one that I'm going to replace this with, right or wrong, is a 12 volt 350 milliamp power supply. In my limited understanding of electrical engineering, that just means that the battery is not going to charge as fast. It's still going to get the right voltage to charge. It's just not going to get nearly as much current capacity as a 500 milliamp might. I don't think that's going to matter much difference because I just plug this in at night and leave it. This is a little bit taller than the one I started with. And so what I'm going to do is make it fit down into these brackets. Let's get a little more light. I'm going to make it fit down into these brackets down here because the original one goes like this. It fits into the smaller brackets, but they have this nice oversized bracket already in there. So I'm going to put the bottom of the transformer into those brackets, and then I'm going to chisel off these two edges because it's just a little bit wider. I'm going to chop those two sides off. It's going to poke right in there, and then I'm going to stick it down. And the nice thing about this adapter is the original bracket goes right over it. So it'll be fine. Time to get rid of the original power supply. I swear I saw a spark when that happened, but I don't know how I could do that since it's not connected to anything. So now with those tabs out of the way, the back of the transformer fits right up against the bottom in there and isn't blocked by the front. It's still going to be held down by the bracket and its vertical position of the terminals is still assured because it's at the same height as the original terminals. Well, the transformer that I chose a while ago, you may have noticed in the video, was 350 milliamps output, but it was AC current. And I figured this out because I wanted to figure out which side was the positive output from this transformer. And when I put the cut leads of that transformer across my voltmeter, I couldn't get a reading because I was set to DC and it was trying to read AC. Excuse me, it was putting out AC. So I've switched. This is now a 12 volt 400 milliamps, which is a little lower than the original, but still fine. Only problem is that the face of this is rectangular and there's a sort of plug receptacle shaped hole in this. So I'm going to chip away at the edges of that in order to make this fit through there. So I chiseled that section out right there in order to make it look more like this plug. And now this plug fits very snugly down inside there. And the nice part is that I won't even need the bracket because the other side pokes through just right. But I'm going to put the bracket on anyway, in case it gets dropped again like last time. So now I'm going to clip these wires, plug this into an outlet and make sure I know which one is positive. And then I'm going to splice the positive wire from this into the positive of the terminal and the same for the negative. So if I plug in my transformer wires, which are now bare, and touch them to the opposite ends, um, if I run them one direction, see I get positive voltage close to 12, which is just jumping around because I'm not holding tight on the wires. And then if I switch them, I get a negative voltage. And that shows me that the first way that I had it is actually the positive attached to the red lead on my multimeter. So that does showed me that the white wire is the positive one. So I trimmed it down and stripped the wires. I fit my plug in its nice snug hole now. Now I'm going to clip off both the leads of the positive and negative original transformer. And I'm going to splice the red wire to the white wire and the black to black. If you haven't used them before, I'm going to use these soldered shrink tube connectors. I know I could solder these wires together old school and put heat shrink tube over the top or even use wire nuts in here if I wanted to, but what I'm going to do is thoroughly twist those two together, slide this heat shrink tube over the top, 
and then make sure that the solder joint is right there over the two wires. And then when I heat it up, that solder is going to melt right over that connection, making sure that it's electrically sound and at the same time the shrink tube will shrink up over the connection. And so that solder flowed and right over the copper wires and it should be strong and electrically sound and then shrunk with the heat shrink at the same time. I'm going to repeat the process on the negative wire. So now I just have to reconnect the electrical wiring. This one that I just soldered back in is the negative terminal for this side and the positive terminal is still attached over here and connected through this. You'll note that I did unplug the transformer and route it underneath um, all the other wiring so that it will make it easier when I have to change this battery box again. I don't expect the plug will die before then and so that way I can get to these wires more easily without them being tangled up in the transformer. Bracket first. So you probably noticed in that last shot, my bracket was a little tall for the new transformer. I took a pair of tin snips and I trimmed off its old feet. I bent it some new feet, drilled some new holes. And now it's gonna be reattached. And so about now you probably ask yourself why spend two hours trying to save a tool that costs 50 bucks you could just run down to Walmart and buy another one. And the answer, my friends, is because loyal tools deserve your loyalty. When something's been good to you for a long time, it doesn't deserve to be thrown on the junk heap. And if it means I have to spend a little bit of my afternoon figuring out how to make it work, then I'm willing to do it. Well, I plugged it in and nothing started smoking, so I count that as a win. Now all I gotta do is put 30 screws or so, hold this thing together back in place. And so that's how it came out. You can see I had to chisel around the front, but it's rock solid. My extension cord will plug right on there, and only you and I will know that it's not in its original configuration. And my beautiful tool goes on to live another day. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.